All right, we're preparing the round for its second stretch. And this part of the differential sulk, we're gonna just get the, um, the top of the hide wet or the, the hitting surface, trying to keep the Mimi nice and dry so that in that second stretch, we can put a lot of uh, tension on them. So we have a wet towel here on this, um, on this board. <laughs> and Mandy, go ahead and add some towels inside. Yeah. And we're just gonna be careful not to get that wet towel um, close to the Mimi. So we're gonna pull it away from the edge and fold it down like Maddie's doing. That we're really trying to prioritize not getting the Mimi wet. Yeah, and some of it will kind of get sucked up by the, um, by the hide. So we, we're gonna just be very, a little bit cautious about how much water we get in here, but um, you know, a little bit will do as long as it stays moist throughout the day. So we'll keep adding water as well. And so um, this, this will take about a, a day maybe, um, and we'll come back to the second stretch later. And we can add water. Actually, um, Maddie or Tommy, do you wanna just demonstrate adding just a little bit of water? So when we add water to the inside of the hide, we'll just, um, we'll just tip just a little bit, just a little bit, and we'll let the towel kind of take that around. Yeah, and we'll just kind of keep doing that um, if it gets dry, particularly in this spring break sun. All right, that's good. Thank you, thank you. And we'll come back to this later. All right, I'll come over here. All right, okay. so we're taking off the tacks from, um, this is our drum A. And so we're gonna use a hammer and a chisel to do that. We're gonna try to save the tacks if we can. A lot of times we can reuse them. So um, we're gonna be careful. We don't wanna damage the head. So if I hit too hard into it, um, angled into it, I don't wanna damage the wood, right, of, of, the, of the barrel. And you know, if I'm too uh, steep, then sometimes I just bend the tack too. So I'm gonna try to get a nice angle to get under the, uh, the tack. I'm under it now, right? And I can, I can I even, I don't even have to hit it again. I can just wiggle it out this way. And then we, we, we still have um, like a decently straight, we can straighten that out and we can use this uh, this tack again. And we'll, we'll use them um, a number of times. So just in and pop it out just like with like some leverage. Um, if it's kind of uh, being hard, you can kind of maybe hit it again at a steeper angle, get yourself right in there. And you know, we still have a pretty uh, usable tack. Okay, so that's the removing tacks from the head. All right, we've taken off the tacks, so here we go. You wanna just give it a whack with this hammer, Tommy? Just upwards, yeah. Loosen it up. Here, we're gonna unbox this too. This drum was last uh, reheaded, or this head was about, I think, seven years or so. They usually last um, five, six years, maybe. We've had COVID too, so this one kind of was part of a, the last of a line of them that was being redone as they slowly got holes in them. All right, and here's inside our chew. And you can see um, this particular one doesn't have um, uh, beveling or, or um, uh, what do you call it? Like the, like um, ribbing and stuff. Uh, yeah, wow, shoot, this hasn't been done in a while. We can see some. Generally, we, we sign our drums and stuff. So, yeah. All right. Okay, so now we're filling in the holes from the previous tacks, and we're doing that by using a toothpick with some wood glue on the end. We'll just stick that in and break it off, make sure that's flush, and we can kind of go at the end, make sure everything's really smooth, but you can kind of get it pretty smooth just, um, just by doing this process and sticking it in and ooh breaking it off yeah so we'll do that to all the old holes just to kind of prevent the barrel from just filling up with holes and then um, we'll continue with the next process this is camera <laughs> light all right so we're um we're finishing the end of the barrel tommy's going over the um, the recently uh, filled in holes with the uh the toothpicks making sure this is super smooth because the thing we're going to be pulling the hide um you know down over this and so any irregularities uh, in friction is going to make it harder for us to get that nice uh, uh even pull so we're gonna um we don't want to like strip the finish but we're just kind of lightly uh sanding these down uh making sure that this is going to be real smooth and manny's supplying uh golf wax uh it's just a kind of solid wax get in a big old uh i don't know box of it and uh, she's uh, applying it to the rim so that this rim is nice and uh, waxy smooth uh, to uh, ease that um, that uh, hide being pulled down over it. So last uh, 
steps preparing the barrel before we, um, we start to stretch. All right, so we've just finished putting some wax on. It's on the rim. It's also on the side of the barrel. Um, while we were doing this, we got our incense in. We try to um, respect uh, the drum and try to remember the reasons why we love playing taiko and give respect to the different types of life that make these drums possible. Uh, so that'll come out though, because this is the second stretch. So we don't want to leave that in there. In the first stretch, we, we sometimes just actually leave it in there as we, um, as we make the rounds, but that's going to come out. And as you can see, this is a pretty waxy rim and that's going to really let that, uh, as we pull that high down, just a nice, easy, uh, even pull there. All right, so we're gonna, next thing we'll do, we'll take our hide and we'll put it on here and, and stretch it up with the ropes. So that's our next step. All right, so now we've, um, we've strung up the, the new hide on the drum. Um, we uh, sign our names on the inside. It's kind of a tradition in our club. When we're preparing a new head, we'll kind of sign the inside. We got our rig all set up, it's all ready to go. And as you can see, starting from a kind of a fixed location on the rig, um, We've tied some rope, that rope goes up over the dowel of the Mimi, back down to another um, one of the uh, four by fours of the rig, and then back up and down and down. So, on. and we just try to get them, you know, roughly even uh, spacing, you know, just kind of what meets the Mimi. This is a 12 Mimi uh, design. So, um, you know, every once in a while we have to kind of skip uh, one of the uh, the dowels, uh, or the 16, I guess, or I guess, five and four uh 18 um the four by fours at the bottom uh yeah and so that gets us to about um here now before we um secure this last rope we're gonna pull the tension uh through each of these are not very taut at this point so starting from where the tension starts here we're gonna yank it as as much as we can pull that tension through and we're, we can use that um if you want to use that uh, uh lever or the uh, screwdriver, yeah. Um, you can, can you hold this, Ash? I think, yeah. sorry. Um, you can. So I'm gonna try to get this all the way through, all that tension through, and maybe I can have Maddie kind of wiggle that out with the, uh, uh, wiggle that one out so that we have less pinching there, right? So I'm, you see, I'm pushing that rope up as much as I can through and bringing that tension around kind of not not dissimilar i guess to our shime huh yeah so then we'll do the next one so if you want to wedge that out oh. yeah, that just helps this sometimes yeah so with like a couple of people this becomes not too difficult actually uh, okay great you can like go up that other and pass it on Another thing that I forgot to film is, um, if you look kind of down by our feet, Ashley, is that white string. Mm -hmm. You can go ahead and let go of that. I've, I've tied the whole rig together to itself using a different string. If you have a super long string, you can just do it all with the same uh, rope. This rope was not going long enough, we tried. Uh, and so I used a separate string to just tie the rig together. When the rig acts as a unit, like it's not moving um, with itself, it makes it easier when it's under tension to manipulate and so that it doesn't lose or introduce tension in new ways. So when using this type of rig design, I just recommend just even just simply lashing the 4x4s together. I'm just holding my tension for me. Kind of just like the shime as I pull down the other side. Okay. Also, if you want to look down, Ashley, you see how this rig used to have um, eye hole rivets or whatever you call those things that held the rope. But you can see how they're bent. Okay, go ahead. Like kind of bent crazy out of shape. This thing gets under so much tension, it bent that steel. So that's the reason why we go. If you just go under the wood, all or nothing, it's got to take the whole rig with it. Oh, sorry, I'm bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> the ends of these dowels are kind of sharp, so just be careful. 
Oh shoot. Um, okay, go ahead. Let this let this tension through, right? We want to pinch it at that point. So you don't want to hold this one too much, right? Just trying to push it up. Okay. Now go ahead and um, open up that side if you can. Uh, okay. Hold up. If you don't mind. Oh, right, we're good. Whatever. Great. 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 Nice. Now look how much more rope we got. Um, we're going to do that one more time through. We're just going to pull the tension through one more time. Uh, so for everyone at the video, you can kind of imagine what that looks like. <laughs> and we'll join you in a second. Sorry. Don't make any blood. All right. So even before we move on to twisting, we're going through one more time. We're pulling that tension through. You can see that even going kind of relatively tight the first time, there's going to be a lot of tension or a lot of slack. I mean, that you'll pick up. So what Ashley... Oops, sorry, Ashley. Good. And Maddie are doing are pulling it through. Ashley's pulling down on the left and up on the right because we're going clockwise. Good. Right. Maddie's pulling a little more through. Yeah. Maddie's working the lever to to unpinch areas to help Ashley pull it down. The tent, the slack is now on the right side of this node, so she. Oh, so this one, yeah, you're gonna have to pull that one hard enough that you. Pull the slack the under there, yeah. So um, just pull up really hard on this one, or I can do that really quick. If you want. <laughs> Here, switch camera. <laughs> so we're also using you might these, have to lift. Yeah, these bottom ones. So I'll just pull that slack through. A lot of slack up here. That Maddie's gonna help. I'm gonna pull that to the other side of the node. Good. Uh, we'll switch over to the next one. <laughs> Pull that all through. Get back in there, Ashley. I like you did. Good, good. So yes. these are all, you know, decently. They got a nice bounce to them, right? You can hear that. Yeah. So even before we started applying the twisting tension. Great. Great. Once all this slack is through, we're going to secure the loose end. The the uh, leading end and then we will um we'll start the next step so the big thing the thing that will ruin your project if it's if any of your mimi break um so that's why we really try to keep them uh super dry that differential soak is only supposed to be getting this top part of the drum right it's it's a pretty hot spring break day actually so i'm, I'm realizing this is um kind of drying out so we're gonna uh even at this phase maybe um add another wet towel up here. Um, and the next thing we'll do, we're just gonna secure this. And so uh, we'll bring this down and we'll just tie a non-slip uh, knot down here. So anything, any kind of knot that won't, um, either self-tightening or won't, won't lose its uh, 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 strength. Oops, no, not like that. <laughs> so I'm gonna get a single hitch here to kind of carry that tension through. And then I'll just secure it with maybe another hitch or and then I'll do it. So, so now you're gonna look, um, you'll see that there's two places that we could stick a bocce. One is between the ropes of the same Mimi, right? Or we could put it between the ropes of two different Mimi, like the inter Mimi space. And that's what we're gonna want, okay? We don't wanna just pull the Mimi down just itself and then because then, then we're, we're you know, pulling each Mimi kind of independently um, and you know puts a lot of uh, kind of just pressure on these individualized points it'd be better if we could kind of control it between those distances so we're gonna start by just placing these bachi in and just use the same um, kind of uh, direction the same chirality if you will we're gonna spin from the top clockwise and we'll just go two half twists on each of them now. And now, like if you've tightened anything before, you might say, oh, you should probably do them in an alternating pattern. Yeah, well, we, we'll, we won't put them all in the same order. Uh, and if you have a couple people doing this, it's pretty easy. Um, one kind of trick I like to do is we'll kind of offset each other. So if you want to count six from me, Manny, one, two, three, four, five, five, six, then let's say, pretend I didn't already do these ones. We could, we could just do it together. All right, twist. Let's do our two half twists. Now let's each move over two, for instance, and we each do our half twists. And that'll be a little more important once it's at a higher tension. Um, uh, for these first one, we'll just uh, get it done. Yeah, oopsie. And then, uh, yeah, 
so just a quick reminder for everyone. So it'll go through um, like this under the right one over the left one is good and then twist and see how like I, I'm able to once it's in there I can pull it to the side right if I want if I wanted to keep twisting you'll end up using that move quite a lot but I want to let Ashley get some experience so there you go <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah, so you go ahead and put it in that one, Maddie, and then twist it around. And then one thing we're going to look for is um, see the entire length of that cord from the Mimi to the base down there at the bottom. So from there to up there. You're going to want, it's going to be easier to twist if that bachi is in the middle of that distance, right? So you might be trying to measure it to the drum or something. Or some of these might be a bit high, right? Or something. You're going to want to try to make that, that, that node that they're twisting on about halfway between where the cord uh, is attached at the bottom and the Mimi. So, so for instance, this one a bit high, we'll just push that down a bit if we can. Yeah, and then that'll make them all a bit easier to twist. Yeah, yeah. And then they can rest nicely against the um, alternate head. Uh, if they, for whatever reason, this, if the length of your stand has it such that they're resting against the drum, you might consider like um, putting some sort of like protective thing on the drum under high tension. Like, you know, these, they can like, the, the wood itself warps just under, like the bachi themselves get these kind of twist lines and, you know, just, the, just a little bit of like letting them go and flicking or just being under intense pressure could mess up your, your drum. So um, yeah, just be careful for that. All right, so now we'll begin the process of uh, our first set of um, twisting. Oops, I said I was gonna get a, a wet towel on here. Let me do that first. Thanks, Mary. Let's just drop that up here. So the thing is like, we, we're gonna wanna keep this uh, wet while we're stretching. Uh, a dry hide won't stretch. Um, so we, we're going to need to keep the part of the hide that we're stretching wet and the part that we're pulling the Mimi dry. So it becomes tricky that we don't want the, the uh, towel to hang down and drip onto the Mimi, right? We really just want to keep just that top surface dry. It's always good to have some sort of rag or something and just be mindful of the Mimi that um, these getting wet and these ripping, that, that's where things are going to break. Um, occasionally, if, if the hide's just... You know imperfections in the hide or you know under intense pressure or something uh or maybe uneven pull too you can rip um up here uh but it's much more likely that if you're gonna rip something on this um it's because one of these mimi got wet okay so yeah so you can kind of see where the line the water line kind of is getting a little bit low here you can you can kind of see kind of like you know you can see the absorption of the height, so we're gonna be careful. I think we're still one we said we're gonna be super careful of this one. I don't know if it's wet on the inside or just naturally weaker or something, um, but we're gonna be careful about this one. This is not a good sign already. Uh, that kind of pull there, I don't know what's going on. Okay, um, all right. So let's go ahead and we'll, um, we'll count off from, let's have Ashley start here. So Ashley's gonna start turning this one that's attached here. And we have two of us today, so, well, we have three of us, but first, now we're, we're gonna, there's 12 of these, Mimi, if we were to divide them in half, one, two, three, four, five, six, this one right here, Maddie's gonna get. So now I want you both to turn each of those, one or do two half twists, so one full rotation. And then one more, Ashley. Great. And then, yeah, remember to angle it, yeah, down into the, uh, down to the uh, right. Yeah. Good. So now move to the one on your left and do that one. Good. And then, you know, just communicate with each other and just iterate this process uh, a few times. I'll jump here in a second. Um, uh, so the thing is, this is what's going to give us like our first pull and you can actually get a really decent stretch just by using this twisting method. This is kind of the cool, um, uh, I don't know, the, uh, 
ethnographic to some degree way of making drums like this is traditionally how taiko would be made other than the mnemonic jacks instead of those mnemonic jacks you would actually have a wedge shaped piece of wood right so the the narrower end underneath it the wider end out here so when i wedge it in with a big old hammer i'm forcing this board up from the bottom board and getting a last bit of stretch but we're not going to start applying this wedge or um, in this case, uh, jack pressure until the very end. That's gonna be the very end of our, our stretch. Our first bit will be just through um, these. So yeah, you've, you've done it once, keep going. Um, we're just trying to make sure that the reason why we're going slow, we're only doing um, you know one full twist at a time and we're doing it on alternate sides is to keep that pull about even what we can up here. So we want this being you know radially pulled in you know all directions somewhat um evenly and uh i think we can yeah we can do these a couple more these um these eventually will get really really tight um as we apply more pressure it's going to be a balance between adding tension and loosening the height so after we get through another a round or two of these twists we're actually going to start agitating the head uh so this around a little bit more <laughs> the first couple are not hard right but then it gets a bit trickier, <laughs> trickier yeah. awesome can i sub for a few can you yeah. do the, is this the one you're on yeah okay. yeah i don't know the, the tricks for this i think it's just um Wanted. You know, there's going to be a shorter end that you're going to be able to twist because yeah. it's closer to the ground. So it's kind of forcing it back and forth, which gets pretty tricky. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> and then you might consider too, like, even at this phase, so after we get done with this round, I can tell this one just by pulling on this at a higher tension. It has to do with the angle, right? That mm -hmm. They were trying to, we have a square platform and a circular drum. So I'm gonna wanna try to just get them kind of even too. So I'm gonna actually give this one another pull. And try to even out the tensions here. Yeah, so I think I had got to here, man. Three, four, five. Oh, sorry. Your next one. Okay. And then we'll. I'm just gonna selectively take a few that I think are a little bit less tight. That's just based off the geometry. Yeah. And do be careful with these, right? If you let them go <laughs> and they're under tension, they will fling around and smack you. I've seen people almost get hit with stuff, or at least if you like break or something too. So this thing doesn't get under high tension, so do be mindful of it. All right, so we'll start our next process um, here. Uh, some sort of mallet that's not, has a wide area. And this one we even wrapped in a towel just to soften it a little bit. We're gonna agitate the head. So you'll just hit, hit it, and what you're doing, you're kind of breaking the collagen out. agitating it so that um, these mo these moments of static friction you're overcoming them and like when there's like uh, tension that it can stretch it will so you can just whack them and so we usually have a couple of these and people just for like 20 minutes just whacking these two it, it can get you know i am a little mindful of my neighbors and stuff too the other way you can do this too i think you, you probably do need to hit it to some degree but you can step on the drum too and uh it's when you do this Oh, you know what? In my old setup, there was like we did it in a garage, and there was like a place you could hold on. So even if you were like slipping, like you wouldn't like, like slip, slip all the way. But, um, the trick is that it's it's pretty slippery at wet height. So let's put the um, the towel back on it, and then you can get someone to go up there. I'll volunteer myself. But if you two want to go up there, um, I think let's just make sure that we're. Somehow supporting the person up there. <laughs> Alright, so I'm, I'm okay now, but if you know, you can just step on this, right? 
But you'll see that now there's water dripping down, right? So it's usually some balancing act of like not getting the Mimi wet. So sometimes someone's running around and drying out the Mimi. I think it's a uh, dry towel over there. Yeah, maybe for sure. And, uh, yeah. Or you can, I guess, for sure. So yeah, you'll just step on this, jump on this. Try to step all around in different places. And then yeah, in our old setup, like we could like we would like jump on this like a trampoline sometimes, but you had something to hold on to. And you just want us to be kind of like a lot. Actually everyone, if you're doing this at home, make sure that you have uh, safety <laughs> system, right? So you know, generally like a rope or something that's tied to uh, something above, like in a garage or just an enclosed space would be ideal. So probably not just an open like that. Did you take pictures? Oh. Alright, so we'll do this for a bit. Do either of you want to step on it? <laughs> I'm gonna cut. Okay, yeah. yeah. So while it's under tension, this is like kind of a good time to even out the Mimi. Um, it's, it's being pulled hard by both sides, so sometimes it just takes a little agitation on one side to even them out. So you can do that at this phase or whenever they're in tension. And then also too, just in, in helping pull this high down. So what I'm doing standing up here or when we're hitting it with the um, the hammers, we're kind of, you know, breaking up that collagen, making it nice and uh, uh, loose. Like it, we, we do have to pound it too, right? We can't just pull, but um, Ashley can uh, uh, actually whack the tops of these mimis, oops, or where, where, the, where the rope kind of is, or like, um, Kind of aim for, can I show you? Uh, try to aim for like right there. Is that okay? So Ashley's actually just taking that whole Mimi dowel and just agitating it and, and letting that tension catch it and pull it down. So you can give it kind of um, even um, kind of a, a, a sharp, hard stroke, maybe rather than a bunch of little ones. Yeah. So when you smack that, you're kind of overcoming, boom, that static friction, right? And you're letting that tension pull that high down in so much as it is able, right? And so that's part of my job now. I'm, I'm breaking up, loosening the high, right? Maddie's going around and tightening these, uh, giving more tension um, where they need them and kind of following a regular pattern, but also giving additional tension to ones that feel uh, looser, that they, they're not carrying a lot of tension. Yeah, and so we can do this for a bit. Too. So these three kind of together give you a, a full pull. So we, we generally do this in a couple different cycles. We don't uh, just go immediately for the, the pull at first, right? As more um, uh, stretchiness is enabled, right? Through breaking up that collagen, uh, we want to we wanna pull that out and, and keep that um, head tight. So when, once it's tacked, it's going to stay a nice uh, uh, high sound. Right now we're keeping the 
towel on there to mute it a little bit just because we are being quite noisy. But let's go ahead and let's hear the tone of it just real quick. Just uh, Can you just tap right in the middle, Maddie? Good, right? So it definitely hears that. Let's listen to the whole sound. Give one big dome. Let, it, let the sound finish. Go ahead. Do you hear? It should come back up. That's what we're kind of listening. A good pull gives you that second feel. Listen to it again. Right there, you hear? One more time. You hear? Yeah, yeah. That rise, yeah. So that's what you're looking for for a nice pull, right? But um, you know, just because this is our first day on the pool, we're gonna we're gonna get through two or three um, kind of stretching sessions today. We're gonna let it sit overnight, and then we're gonna take it all the way uh, to a high tension and tack it in. Here's a quick video update for our drum. Um, I didn't get a lot of videos in between um, because I started to have a problem and I want to show that here. So the thing I think I'm always looking for um, is the Mimi. Whenever I've kind of had to tap out or stop a stretch, it's usually because the, the Mimi are the ones ripping. Um, only one time, or I think that I have, some, or maybe twice, um, were rips uh, somewhere else. And that might have been more having to do with the skin, but um, you can see that uh, yeah, there's these rips forming on these Mimi, which has kind of forced me to tack it in early. I actually was uh, a little panicked about this one is going to snap right away, which so I started uh, tacking a little, um, perhaps uh, uh, <laughs> quicker than I should have. You can see they're a little bit crooked here. I'll see what I can do to fix that here. A little bit more regular uh, spacing um, for the the tacks on. The other side around, this is a free hand though. Um, you know, I think using a measuring or using a, a, a little a jig or kind of a, a measuring tool that you've kind of made to space the uh, Mimi is a really great way to get them looking nice and clean. Um, I'm using my hand, three fingers and the space between knuckles. Um, I think you can also do freehand pretty nice too, um, but it takes time <laughs> and I kind of rush it here. Um, yeah, I, I think the in kind of retrospective things I could have done maybe a little um, better is the, uh, you know like taking more time I, or I think it's always a matter of making sure you're taking time to let uh, or, and to break up this collagen in the head um, but then there, there's there's certain limits that you're going to get um, just naturally too and as you can see I, I worked this up uh, you know um, I was stepping I wasn't um, pounding on the drum um, but by the time that the these red ones are kind of at their max and the about this kind of distance on the the black set of the uh, uh, jacks uh, this is kind of where a lot of the other ones have got to too. So I think that's just, we might be hitting that kind of natural limit of the hide at that point. Um, and you know, and, and maybe there's some wisdom in not trying to take it to its extreme. That's not wisdom I've learned yet, but um, uh, yeah, it's, it, it typically is when one of the Mimi starts to signify it's not gonna take any more that I uh, have been stopping. Um, and when these things break, it's not, great it's uh these will come uh it's under so much tension that this this will will fly out uh it's happened to us once before and it's kind of dangerous um so you know just be careful with that um it was not the mimi that we expected uh the one i had been watching really closely was this one this one actually held pretty well um throughout the thing i think if i had a little more time too i could have evened them out a bit um by you know more kind of hitting down the Mimi while they were under tension. I you know, I started tacking at a time that I was not quite um, uh, ready to. Um, and that was kind of just a value call based off I was watching this move. Um, but yeah, um, uh, yeah, I think really take the time between um, pumps. So, you know, you pump it up a couple times and make sure you're breaking down the collagen on the head. Um, cause you know, otherwise like, you know, we're going to hit this drum a lot, so it, it'll break up over its use. It's, it's, you know, life use and you don't want it to at that point then become stretchy and then, you know, lose a pitch on the drum. I don't think we're, you know, I do, I do think this will be a, a nice sounding head. Let's hear it real quick. Hearing that rise at the end. You know, quite pingy now, um, too, you know, as they generally are when you just make them, but, you know, it'll settle into a nice 
uh, you know, deep resonant tone um, over over time. Um, and, you know, looking forward to hearing this once it's off. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll finish, um, I'll kind of clean up my first roll of tacks, um, make sure that they are all in and I can kind of change the angle a little bit and then I'll add the second roll. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's the tack, you know, maybe I can, I don't know how, how it's just me right now, I can't hold the um, camera and tack at the same time, but maybe I can, um, I'll figure out something. Okay, I've kind of started one. Um, I'm gonna just. Oh man, I usually would use my left hand to hold it, but um, let's. Show. Kind of tack it in that way. Um, yeah. All right, so we're done here with this drum, so we're gonna go ahead and take that off tension. Just as a last kind of look, um, while it's at tension, these are really stiff. They don't move much. Um, uh, and if we want to go down here too. Uh, like this is how far left the jacks are. Um, so I'm gonna take it down. I'll show you really quick. Um, this thing can, uh, well, if you have more than one person, <coughs> maybe you do these simultaneously. Uh, but this can be, be a little careful. They, you're letting a lot of tension go. Um, you can hear it growing. Red ones I put in here to um, help support it at its height. So yeah, you can just hear how much tension. Also, when it's under extreme tension, it's uh, it's holding itself together pretty um, well, well, so that uh, it will kind of uh, the whole stand might have been really flat on the ground before, but it starts to rock as it um, as kind of it pulls up on some of its edges and kind of finds whatever axis it's on. So you, you can see I kind of put like rocks as little like shims underneath it too, just to try to keep it stable. But that's kind of normal as. As you put like a lot of tension on this thing, it will change how it sits on the ground. Uh, <clears throat> Alright, so yeah, I'll do this. But uh, once these valves are all the way open, I should be able to just push this down. And these are loose again now. Actually, at this point, this is loose enough that I can probably just. you're done tacking them, you really can take them off. I like to let the head dry while it's still under tension. And just let it get super hard while it's still on the on the leg. And then we just take these out. Take this off. I remember like at, at various periods in history or maybe at various like this uses like the Mimi either left off or, or cut off I mean or left on. Um, I think having really nice looking Mimi is like kind of in current standards like a nice aesthetic. Uh, so you can see that if you come over here for instance this uh, let me get a hammer or something. <laughs> this Mimi looks a bit uh, beat up. It is a bit beat up. Uh, so, yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe 
to avoid that. I'm sure, probably just don't take it quite as far, I think. And, oh, um, well, okay, I do have a trick though that I'll pass along. Um, sometimes I take one that just came out and use it to drive the others out. If they get stuck, I just use the one to whack out the other. Stuck in I swear it helps something. <laughs> It's kind of pingy, and they tend to be that way for a little bit. So just you know, uh, take them to practice, hit them, uh, break them in, and, and they'll start taking a more kind of characteristic sound for a taiko after a little bit. But it, it, you know, take a little bit. Um, they say that the drum heads sound the best right before they go, and I do think that's kind of true to some extent. Um, uh, yeah, so this has been making a drum or just reheading a drum, and we started with um, our already made. Uh, you know, pre-molded head, and we, um, so we just had, uh, had stretched it for this process. I had molded that head a, a while ago, so I still need to kind of document molding the head, maybe, but, um, yeah, this is, it's March in 2022, um, yeah, and so this is for maybe future drum maker collegiate players. Okay, so I guess my biggest piece of advice is, um, when you're making drums as a you know a collegiate taiko player without you know like a professional studio or something is that um you know things might not be perfect every time but you shouldn't let like perfection get in the way of just you know getting something done so you know in this case we kind of had a rush on the attack so when the the ear was gonna rip or something and, and you know we might not always have every condition that we we need like a, a nice quiet place where we can make it so you know we kind of adjusted by trying to be a little bit quieter with how we pounded the head and stuff but um I think, you know, this is how the drums get made by just people doing it on their free time. Uh, in, you know, spring break now or like a weekend or something. Um, and, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time, but it's, I think it's really rewarding. And you wouldn't have, you know, we wouldn't have all the drums we do if, if we didn't um, rehead them and, and take care of them. So it's kind of an important, um, you know, part of being a taiko player. Uh, I think more and more these days people are getting them professionally redone, um, particularly, you know, the... Uh, Taiko Center in Los Angeles, and uh, uh, you know, there's other professionals like um, uh, Toshi Kato in uh, Los Angeles too. But so up here in you know in Davis, um, you know, I think there's still not that many places where you could get these professionally done. So at this time, it's still pretty uh, useful, and I, <clears throat> I think it's still kind of important, uh, you know, just way to connect with you know history and culture too, and, and uh, the North American, Japanese American, or, you know, Asian American Taiko experience. So. Um, yeah, just making a drum. I think um, Tayo uh, Omo, who is a Dakota member now, once came and he played with us. Uh, and I had kind of said something to him along the lines of like, you know, after playing on like a song on Taiko every day, like, is it, is it weird to play on these homemade drums? And he said, he said, no, you can hear the love that you put into them. He said, I actually kind of like the sound that it, you can, you can kind of hear it in the way you play. So. I think that's kind of true of all our drums. They're all a little bit different, all a little bit weird, kind of just like collegiate title players. But I think when they get together in an ensemble, it sounds real nice. And uh, you know, you make something out of that. So, all right, that's it for this. Uh, this is our drum A, um, reheaded uh, uh, March uh, 2022. And this one actually um, was tight. This was the only one that I've done. Uh, the, this reverse head was, uh, we didn't replace the hide. It, it was just it, it's the, the head that we don't normally hit but it's, it was super loose and we tried um, actually just taking it off uh, re um, weaponing and it and, and doing the whole differential soak again so you know and, and so tightening it and if you zoom in here I think on this side you'll see um, there'll be some um, like holes uh, or 
maybe we covered them pretty well. Oh, you can see over here, right? This is where the old um, one was and we stretched it and so we retacked it. Uh, uh, yeah, um, yeah. So you can do that if you have a head that's just like super like flat um, and you know, you can you can actually just stretch it again and get some use out of it. Um, I think this is all, maybe I did two like that actually, but um, but yeah. Uh, most of the time we just we do a, a new head by the time we switch it it's usually broken <clears throat> okay i think that's everything the last thing too that um, i didn't mention is that um you know you've just made a new hide and um you know it was dry for a long time as around and uh you know you've dried it out after stretching it you should probably condition it and you should condition your hides pretty regularly i think we try to do them once a quarter this is just a leather um treating uh product and just you know using that on your hitting surfaces um, it's just good practice to um, keep them from kind of drying out and flaking. I think if you notice particularly if it's like super flaky, uh, that's something that can be prevented with just a little bit of uh, treatment. So, okay, so that's just um, last thing to do maybe before you roll out your new drum.